Hi everyone, my name is Tisha, uh, and I graduate December 20th. Yay. Yay. Um, okay, so I just wanted to say that me graduating um, with my bachelor's degree is like it's it's been a ride. Okay, it's really been a journey. Um, so I have a list here, so I won't get off track. Um, so I'm graduating with honors. So that's that's a three point five and up basically. Ooh. Yeah, that means that I would have had to have gotten an A um, or low A like every single semester since I've been here. Um, and that in itself, if you think about it, how much hell I was in. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. Uh, so my dad is out of work, but um, yeah, uh, he's like debt free. So me yeah. being at this school, um, I don't think it's proper in America to say how much like debt you're in or whatever. Um, <laughs> but I am not in a lot of debt, so don't worry about me. Um, <laughs> I know that when I go to South Korea, because when I leave, I think in February, um, I'm going to pay off my debt within about three months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. nice. And if you can think of, oh, maybe how much thousands, that's the ballpark, that's the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, okay, so suffering, okay, so I received my associate's degree um, at a community college in Florida, in Tampa. And then from there, I came to Virginia. And then eventually I got accepted into GMU when I was uh, in Israel, because I used to live in Israel. Um, and I was really happy that I got accepted into Mason because HCC was literally hell. Um, not that the people were terrible, just my experience there. It was awful. I went, it, okay, if you can imagine this, I went from weighing 88 pounds, 88 pounds, and that's healthy for me, to 125 pounds in about two years. So if you can imagine like how much it took stress, from that, yeah. how much stress I was under, yeah, stress. Um, it was a lot. And then going to Mason or GMU, um, and I was there for two years because I had my degree and I transferred. Um, I, I loved being at the school. Like I love that God gave me the opportunity to go to the school because to be honest I felt that I was grossly underqualified to go to the school um, and then he let me go to the school because I, I promised God something I said if if you let me go to the school keep in mind I only applied for two schools and I got rejected from one and I was already in Israel and I had a, a visa that lasted a year I told God um, if I if you want me to go to college then I have to go to GMU because there's no other like option, I didn't apply for another school. Um, but if you want me to stay in Israel, then let me get rejected. Um, if you want me to go to GMU, I'll major in whatever you want me to major in, regardless of what I put in the application. Um, and then he accepted me and then he wanted me to go and then I had to leave Israel. And it, to be honest, I'm not gonna cry, but to be honest, <laughs> Israel was the very first time I ever had friends. Yeah. Wow. It was. No, no, um, it was, sorry, no, uh, it was the very first time I made friends. I'm 24 now, but I'm a military brat and uh, moving around a lot, you kind of, you have to quickly make friends. You have to like be nice and like immediately, you know, make friends. And then people kind of, when they find out that you're moving, um, they don't like really want to maintain that friendship with you. Um, and it, no, it's okay, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that was hard. But when I got to Israel, everyone was so accepting of me and it was incredible because I had never experienced that before. Um, I didn't know I was Jewish until I got to Israel. Like I didn't discover it, my, my mom took a DNA thing. Um, so, and then when I was with other Jews, they were like, we Jews gotta stick together. And that blew my mind. I was like, Christians would stick together with someone else um, who's also a Jew. Like, 
like a lifelong friendship. Lifelong friendships didn't mean anything to me because I never had a friend short term or long or short term, but not long term. So I didn't really understand. I couldn't comprehend um, what a friend really was until I got to Israel, and that was 2016. And then I had to leave that abruptly um, and go to Mason. And um, and when I left, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just sweating. It's not. Uh, <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. Thank you. Um, and then yeah. So when I left, it was it was really hard because I had to go through it all over again. Um, and I was really really happy to go to GMU. So don't get me wrong. GMU is like a great place. I'm honestly shocked that um, you know I did so well in the school. But if I'm being honest, it was not because I'm smart. It was because I pleaded with God every semester to Amen. let me pass all my classes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then he not only let me pass my classes, he let me get A's in them. Um, with rare instances of like B's. Um, I think only once ever I got a C and I cried. It was crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to say that God has tremendously blessed me to be able to go um, from that school to graduate with my associates, to go to Mason, um, to be here, and then now I get to um, travel the world. Now I get to have this certificate um, that enables me to teach wherever I want throughout the world. And I have a bachelor's degree, so those two combined really lets me go anywhere I want. Um, and I'm tr like tremendously grateful to Jesus. So, thank you. Of her continuation of what she was saying. Um, mine's will be brief. No, no, just take as much time. Okay, well, um, yeah, please. well, I just want to thank God because this, um, without getting into the whole history of my life, with the exception of the women's um, uh, prayer breakfast, um, you, they understand a little bit more of what I'm saying. Um, uh, our background, um, we came um, from we came, it's not that we were a dance or anything, we came from a long line of um, merchant um, traders and a long line of um, lawyers. Um, mm -hmm. But during the process of it, um, my grandmother messed up. So um, that was a long story. So the curse started from there. And my grandmother went from there, they were starving and malnutrition and out of 13 children, I think, five of them died or something like that. It, no, it was more than that, children. It was a bunch of kids that died from malnutrition. Um, so we came, they came to the U.S. and what have you. But in the process of, uh, of, of being cursed and stuff, you say curse words, you know? You, you're not cussing, but uh, they were cursing their children out of frustration, and mm -hmm. things they wow. shouldn't be saying. So the intelligence factor, they believed a lie. So therefore, they thought that they were intelligent. Unfortunately, I was affected by that. So in the process of that, when I was raising my children, I, um, I, didn't, I wasn't in the best churches, okay? So, but I came across a church, a book, and I read, and it, it taught about life. That you could speak life and death with the tongue. And um, it was very, very hard for me to stop that curse, okay? But in the process, I did try very hard to teach my children that you can do this, along with James. He's another one. He, so he'd understand my background. So we never wanted our children to be with that generation of my grandmother where we weren't going to prosper educationally. We weren't going to do that. So we, myself, uh, I didn't get educated like I should have. And it was because I believed in the lies. But by the time that, that curse came off of me, I was already, and I had my children, I was already in the, in the thick of things and stuff. Not that I regret anything, I am happy, but I invested into my children. I invested my time, my prayers, everything. It was a sacrifice to not only pay for my, our children's education, but the time and the things that we embedded into them through prayer and word. Not that we were perfect parents by far, we failed a lot of times. But through our success is only through Christ because they they actually did really quite well. It's unheard of in my family for some wow. of my kids mm -hmm. to 
graduate with honor, much less graduate, or even attend a university for that matter. So for us, this is huge. This is I know other people think I've met those families where, oh yes, you know, it's normal for them. But not in our family, no. You know, so I give God all the glory for this. And Tisha is only very not much, you know. Soliana, she she's debt free. You know, my eldest, I don't know if you met her. And Joshua, you know, he's still in it, but he's we're praying that none of no debts will be involved. But either way, as you as you saw, um, we come from a military family. Our family, we have a few flying out, okay? But our family is our church. Our families are in California, San Francisco. But as you already know, with your own families, if you are not both body believers, you're not really connected, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you guys are it. So um, we will, we, we, uh, I've, um, by the grace of God, he gave Tisha, my husband's not working, so he gave us that venue, 150 an hour. We're not paying that. It was a glitch in the system, okay? I wasn't even renting that. So he gave that to her. He gave her a beautiful business outfit. Really couldn't afford it. Well, mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I won't get into the details, but it was just like many miracles along the way. Mm -hmm. So you're, I'm going to put it out on our little message, our private message, um, as a reminder of where this is going to be. You don't have to show up to the graduation. That's too early in the morning. I totally understand. So I have to be there really early, okay? But please come to the venue. Okay? Yeah. There's going to be yeah. awesome. Yeah. My mother and my aunt's going to be there. They're going to be cooking and what have you. My food will be available. My uncles will be there. Uncles, and that in itself will be a miracle. That's James's um, brothers. Yeah. Don't be shocked. They don't look like him, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it is his brothers. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a godsend. So um, I appreciate if you all come out, really. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do it, do it. Everybody. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's just so many things, you know, that uh, we're so thankful for God, just like Sister Joanna said. God's blessings, you know, um, you just give him a little inch, not even very much, you know, and then he just pours out stuff, you know. Um, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed by all the, all the things that he... You know, um, it's not that I was so faithful or we are so good or anything, but just just a little extension of showing him something, and he just like woof, overwhelms you. So, but first of all, like this this trip, you know, I mean, there's no way we could afford it. I mean, we didn't even know how much it costs when we. I don't know how many of you know, but basically the airfare to get there was unheard of. It's round trip from this Nairobi, uh, from JFK to Nairobi was two hundred fifty dollars. Oh wow! That's awesome. Wow! <laughs> Two of us, we 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 just grabbed it like under five hundred dollars. It's like cheaper than going to Florida. <laughs> so because we're like, hey, this is our twenty first anniversary. Let's look for something, and then this just came within an hour. We like grab it. We don't know how much it costs to the rest of. We're just gonna. Sleep on the floor, <laughs> and then and then after that we found out like oh my god safaris are really expensive. <laughs> was like, okay, we can rent a car and a tent. <laughs> so so we started investigating a little bit. Not even that we only had a month, you know, between the the, the time we leave and got the, got the ticket and we left. So um, you know, luckily he's he's very adventurous. So we basically rented a, a four by four with a little pop-up tent and then and then we said we're just gonna do our own DIY <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're gonna just go and show up <laughs> but and then people are like oh my gosh you're going to Africa you know this and that and this is scary you can't just go into a national park you need a guide and you need a you don't you won't know what to do when the elephant comes at you and you're like driving and <laughs> or, or, or a lion jump on top of your car and you don't can't go in so they're like this, these are people from Tanzania. <laughs> when I, I thought I was going to get good advice from them. So I'm like, I told Ivan, like, oh my gosh, I don't know if it's a good idea for us to just, just go there and drive and not know whatever, anything about it. And he said, ah, we are wing it. <laughs> and we did, and uh, it was not scary at all. We met so many people, so many... Uh, 
I mean, we did get lost once or twice, but um, <laughs> it was, it, it was a, you know, overall it was a good experience. I mean, I was scared because of all these preconceived ideas and preconceived or even advice that I got, you know, like people feeding me. And so, but everything went smooth. We met so many good people. We even had one, like uh, we met one boy towards the end of our trip. Uh, you know, he was our son's age. He was, he was 21, a little older than our son. And then we kind of half adopted him. <laughs> so now we're just communicating when he has like a little, uh, a wife and a daughter, or a daughter or son, I'm not sure. Son. Uh, yeah, son. He's like a, a month and a half. I mean, I'm sorry, a year and a half. And uh, he he's just literally stay in that gate, open the gate, and, you know, whatever the park gate. And then uh, when he's off, he goes back home and herd. So, but there are just so many people that we come that you know we either are able to bless a little bit or not not very much, but still make that connection. So we feel very blessed, and you know we also got to go to church on Sunday. It just it just happened to be there as we're just driving around, and everything. Um, no, nobody, you know, robbed us or killed us because Nairobi, they're scaring us. It's like <coughs> Nairobi, Nairobbery. That's what oh. 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 <laughs> so, and then the animals, you know, nothing happened. I was really scared, but... <laughs> so, just God bless. And the whole trip, you know, we did like a fraction of what you would have to pay, you know, if you, if you, you know, going the way that most people are going to go. You know, literally, I mean, and at the same time, it was not all slumming. You know, when, when it was time when we had, we ate well, we, you know, when the campsites were beautiful, some, it's even nicer than sometimes in the hotel because you get the whole view to yourself, the animals, you know, it's just like a, almost like a, not quite a Garden of Eden. But, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, we're so thankful. Everything went well, nothing, you know, um. So it was just like, I can't believe God gave this, and it just happens that we know that it wasn't our own doing or planning, because if we planned, it would have been a year ahead, or you know what I mean? That's, that's what we're trying to, but when God gives you to, it's just perfect, you know? Um, and, you know, we're just so grateful for that. And, and the other thing was, um, you know, previously I was interviewing for jobs, mm. and I wasn't even looking for it, but I, I think I, I wasn't too happy with where I was working, and then before I went on vacation, you know, I interviewed with three companies. One didn't come through, but that's that's fine. You know, it was kind of mutual. I didn't want them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the and then while I was there, I didn't even know it. When I came back, I had already one offer, and then the other people they want more interviews. So I I interviewed one more time with them, and then of course I said, well, you know, I have the other offer. <laughs> so so they kind of like hurry up a little bit. So now I have two offers in wow. hand. They're gonna it's like a 30 some percent increase from what I'm gonna wow. you know, pay now. Oh so I, I'm like, uh, what should I counter that with? I'm like, you know, not. <laughs> but then at the same time, I'm like, you know, I just wanna grab it. But anyway, it's just so much. I mean, it's so overwhelming, you know, even like, a, you know, there's still a lot of other stuff, but I feel like God, you know, just, um, you know, um, I, you know, I just feel like, you know, just even, just even making that commitment, you know, even like Ivan having the, you know, commitment, you know, through the baptism and Michaela baptism, God knows that we are trying to obey him. We, we're not perfect, but, you know, just, just having that, um, you know, family, you know, just even coming to church, you know, and also enjoying fellowship and the time and, you know, I feel like God bless us because of what we, you know, yeah, you know, what we're showing, obedience. I mean, it's not even like, it's even fun, you know, <laughs> His obedience is not even like a chore. It's like just investing more time in Him. And then also my, myself personally, I, I, you know, before I came, I, I always believed, but I was kind of you know, backside. It was not the whole family thing, but, but now, like, I feel like, you know, me and my house, we got to honor God, you know, to yeah, yeah. serve God. Mm -hmm. I'm still praying for my son, Alex, but he started to see, you know, that, you know, uh, and then the house, you know, like, I'm so happy that Ivan's, you know, um, you know, started to really, you know, see the, the hand. I mean, he's seen it all this time, but just making that, when you do the baptism stuff, it's not just... It, it it seals it's like that marriage right you're not you're not just engaged <laughs> you're like married to god so that commitment i think i think because of that to me because of that he, he's honored us and he's you know given us 
So, um, you know, I'm just very grateful for that. Anyway, so. <laughs> Tom, you know, as you know, we all missed church last week, but Brett was sick. And um, it was just kind of weird because God's still speaking to us, even though we weren't here. Um, he, I called him on Monday from work, and I started telling him, I was like, wow, I really had this weird dream last night. And then I started telling him about the dream. So it was like, you know, it was Monday morning. And he's like, you know, that's really weird because he was watching your sermon online, and he was talking about the birds of prey. So in my dream, it was like, um, I was in my brother's house, but it wasn't my brother's house. It was just really weird. And, <laughs> and he... Um, and I knew that my father was there. Like my father passed away many years ago, and I never really saw him. He was like kind of off to the side, but I knew he was there. And um, and the house was under construction, which is weird because no one I mean, my brother's house isn't. And my sister-in-law was there, which was a little. I mean, she had some things to say. And I don't really remember what she was saying, but as I'm looking out these picture windows, there's this big bird that just came and flew and swooped down. And I thought, wow. I said, is that an eagle? And the longer I looked at it, this eagle, then it started turning into a giant um, vulture. And I said, without, you know, there again, I'm talking to my father, and I'm like, uh, that, that's a really big bird. And I was like, wow. And then, and my father had said something, but I couldn't remember what it was. And then as I'm looking at this bird, just watching it, then it grew and it had two heads. Mm -hmm. And so it's walking by the window, and it's coming like towards me, like, I was sitting here, it's coming. And then I noticed it's not on the outside of the house anymore. Mm -hmm. It's come inside. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, it's after me. Mm -hmm. And so it jumped and I grabbed it. And then I grabbed it, I had it with two hands. And, um, and I had it pinned down and it kept trying to bite me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to the other head at this point, I only have one. And it kept trying to bite me, but it couldn't hurt me. And my father had said something to me and it's weird because I haven't called my father daddy since I was a child. Mm -hmm. So in my dream, I feel like my father was a representation of God being mm -hmm. beside wow. me. Mm -hmm. And um, because then I said, and then it really got weird because Brett's like, wow. Because <laughs> it turned into music. I mean, this whole song came into my head as I'm holding it. And I said, Daddy, I've got this. I won't try to sing it for you. But <laughs> Daddy, I've got this. And I said, um, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say, I don't know where I'll go, I don't know where I'll stay, but Daddy, I can do this. And it's like, uh, there's no reason for me to hide because I know you're by my side. Oh. And, then, <laughs> and then it kind of changed, I don't know, it just went black, and it was weird because there's all these like shapes, just like, uh, like a negative image, and I could see there were demons and stuff, but there was no sound. There was nothing, and I wasn't afraid. I didn't know what I was looking at, though. I was like, I don't understand. What am I supposed to see? And then it just changed from there to just bright lights and aurora. Yeah. And at that point, I was kind of awake, and I didn't want to wake up because I wanted to watch the lights and see yeah. more. But then I woke up, and it was just really, really weird. Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah.